want you to eat yourself from the top of your Go down to the description box right now to hear more Malcolm, Les Martin, my man Riz featuring Conway the Machine in its entirety in the description box right now exclusively on iTunes. Don't wait. Hit the button right now. Let's go. Or somebody praying for your demise, man. Yes, sir. You said, definitely about to tune into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam, man. Everybody listening on YouTube, y'all already know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button and make sure that you share this video all right sam man i know you want to talk about um the great late richard Pryor. yeah man one of uh, probably no nah, my top comedian of all time richard's number really? one yeah oh, man shit. live on the sunset strip right some of the mother comedy shows classic classic comedy shows some of the best i can still listen to him now in 2019 for sure but you know quincy jones he did a real real in-depth controversial interview i believe it was with vulture back in 2018 where he said a lot about a lot of different people in particular, Richard Pryor and Marlon Brandau. Now, my uh, excuse me, this is uh, Quincy Jones words. And I quote, he was the most charming motherfucker you ever met. He'd fuck anything he said about Brando. And he said he fucked Richard Pryor. They were fuck buddies. Now, this came out and everyone was up in arms in particular about this conversation. Richard Pryor's widow at the time, Jen her with his widow, excuse me, Jennifer Lee confirmed the news, but received some backlash from the comedian's daughter, Rain, who denied the claim and referred to Jenny as my dad's so-called widow who needs to keep legitimizing herself and tarnish our dad after he is dead. Now, jump to 2019, probably about a year ago, mm -hmm. Jennifer's back in the news and she told the Daily Blast that she suggested the comedian's kids didn't know him the way she did, quote Jennifer. He wasn't ashamed of it. And people say, well, let him rest in peace. What are you doing? Then you're not a fan because Richard discussed this. He would be talking about it today if he was here. He'd mm. piss off that Q was getting a hard time. He'd probably fill you in on the details. Now, she also <sighs> added, they don't know their father the way I know him. Clearly, I think she's off base, but that's okay. I wish them well. Oh, God, this got a lot of fucking layers. <laughs> and I'm probably hitting you with a lot of shit you didn't know. Because back then, 2018, we were busy with other shit. And I covered this, but you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, damn. What you think about all this, man? Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know what to think about it, man. It's a situation where I heard of, I heard about the uh, Richard. I didn't know who with who. And I didn't you know if it was even true. But now I know. You know what I mean? And I, don't, I don't take nothing away from him. I mean, um, he, obviously, he, um, it was something that he came out and um, boasted about, you know, for whatever reason. And, and, you know, we got situations where... For whatever reason, some people are attracted to the opposite sex. You know what I mean? And um, that's not my thing. But I, I can't blame them. But as far as the family coming out and talking about it, I mean, I think it's their prerogative. I don't see what the point is at this, what this is going to accomplish, you know. But, I mean, just to have discussions like this. But I don't really know, man. I don't know much too, too much about it to really, you know what I mean? I think it's just wild. It's wild, man. <laughs> yeah. And we all know Richard Pryor was into the drugs. He was into the wild times. He was he grew up in a brothel. So he was just... His right, whole right. mind and whole body was programmed in some different shit. But we all got respect for him. Like I said, he's the number one comedian of all time. And he's not going anywhere no matter what his lifestyle did. And I think that's why a lot of people respected him. Right. And I can agree with what his widow said in regards to him being very candid about it if he was alive now. Whether that be true or false, I think he would give you the 100% raw truth about that. Right. Something that we don't have in 2019. We talked about Dave Chappelle going in on my man Daniel Caesar and him getting sensitive yeah, about that yeah. because you can't say shit like that anymore. Right. But we could sit here and talk about Richard Pryor being a crackhead and fucking Marlon Brando and he would laugh that off like it was nothing. We got to oh, get some tougher skin. We got to just learn to laugh shit off. Laughter is the best medicine. Fact. I think that even through all the craziness that Quincy Jones dropped in that interview, it's a pretty funny fucking interview. He said some wild shit as an old man, man. And old men say some of the funniest things. So yeah, shout out to the whole family. Like you said, hopefully these two people or these two, uh, the family and the mom or, or the widow, excuse me, can get together mm -hmm. privately yeah, as opposed yeah. to throwing this out publicly to where, yeah, unfortunately he can't rest in peace because people yeah, got to keep talking point? about it. I mean, definitely, man. But yeah, definitely. That is what it is, man. Here on the Uncensored Truth Podcast, definitely living up to the name, you know what I mean, today. But we're going in today, man. Um, So I want to jump to this next story, you know, real quick, because Howard Stern, mm -hmm. Howard Stern and Wendy Williams, I've been going at each other, you know, it seems like today. And I just want to start off first they're saying that it started when Wendy Williams pretty much went on her show. And she said this about Howard Stern. She said, Howard is so Hollywood right now. 
and Howard, I love you, but since you go in Hollywood, everything you say is so predictable. Um, every story is going to be about, oh, I love this one, and then we went on their yacht. He is a Hollywood insider, which sucks. You started like me, being of the people, but at some point you sat behind a microphone for too long, and now you are the people. Now she says, um, now this actually got Howard Stern, Howard Stern, you know, to, to go off after she did this on the show, and he said, jealous bitch. You're nobody to me. He said, you'll never be me, Wendy. You'll never be me. You could pretend to be me. You could pretend to be like me, but you're, but you're not. You don't have my wit and you don't have my talent. You couldn't have the career. You're a fly. And they kept going back and forth, going at each other's throat. You know, um, with more words, I get the point there. Um, so they went back and forth with each other. Pretty much. Pretty much. You know, um, obviously, you know, both big in the, in the radio, started in radio, now have huge careers you know, respectively, and they're both, you know, different what they do. But um, I don't know. I don't know too much about the, their history, but this is this is wild, Sam, man. What do you think about this, man? Uh, Howard Stern, you know, I know you uh, posted a lot of videos with him going on a lot of people in the mm -hmm. past, namely Jamie Foxx and Wendy Williams, you know, going back and forth with each other um, in the open. Publicity stunt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Publicity stunt. You don't see two people on the top of their games the way they are get affected by words. And and for, and and for her to say that about Howard Stern and for him to react in the way that he reacted and then them to go back and forth. We see Wendy Williams is on a comeback, her kind of getting back after all the mm -hmm. controversy that went on with her husband. What better way to do it when to get in a tiff with somebody, somebody you trust, somebody you know is going to piggyback you. And who better for Wendy Williams to spar with than Shock Jock? Piano, what's his name? The fuck is his name? Howard, Howard Stern. Stern. <laughs> so Damn. I think it's a publicity stunt, man. Yeah, nah, I think that, you know, and even when you read looking at the words, it kind of looks like, you know, what I mean, just say this about her. You'll never be me, jealous bitch. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, and maybe it could be some truth to, you know, some type of bad blood, but I doubt. I think it's one of those things where, you know, um, again, she's coming, you know, back off a little hiatus, trying to kind of get her name hot again. And um, again, you got to get somebody to go back and forth with. So, you know, that is what it is, man. That, that's a crazy situation there. Wendy Williams is always, you know, we come up listening to her when she was on Power 99. So we have an intimate relationship, even with Charlemagne when he was in Philly, listening to her. So um, happy about her progress, but she's always tied up in crazy stuff like this, man. Nothing new. I'm going to fuck you up real quick. So you know that they didn't mm, um, record that in Philly, right? Nah. That was nationally syndicated. So it was in New, New York. York. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was reading Charlemagne's book, the first one, and he was talking about their journey and how he had to go from, right. I don't know if he was going from South Carolina at the time where he lived in New York, but went there to, to shoot that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I thought that shit was right here. Because we used to listen to it on Power 99 every morning, whether it be going to the bus yeah, or in yeah, the morning. Yeah. That was our joint, man. And that's when we first got introduced to both of them, Wendy Williams and Charlemagne. Yep. And they both doing their thing still. So shout out to both of them, man. Yeah, do their thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. Man, if you're listening on YouTube, I need y'all to do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the like button and share this video at some point. Matter of fact, share it right now. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? Right now for us. We appreciate that. I want to, this last story, Sam, man, we didn't have this in the lineup, but I remembered this one actually from yesterday. You know, my, my man, T.I., yep. you know, which we love, you know, a lot, you know, um, put up a post on Instagram and it had a lot of people talking started up a lot of um discussion in the hip-hop community and he says any way you slice it i'm the very best at what i do impossible to duplicate except no substitution when you get done bullshitting riddle me this who since Pac has maintained as much consistency diversity within music genres businesses and other opportunities i'll wait sam at the question is on you what do you think about what ti said um about Tupac and who has, you know, kept the consistency and done, pretty much done what he's done, you know, overall in hip hop today. I have not done nearly the amount of <clears throat> of work that T.I. did in music that we've done on this podcast game. We got a lot to do work to do. But once a day, I get kind of compelled in myself to flex. Like, I really want to fucking mm -hmm. just go ahead and say mm -hmm. this on here or this mm -hmm. on here, this on here. And I don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't because it's not up to us to say we the best. It's not up to us to give ourselves personal accolades. We mm -hmm. gotta put in the work and then let the people do that. No matter how much we feel as though it's justified, yeah. and I'm not arguing with what T.I. is saying. Yeah. I'm not arguing with him, but yeah. you can't self-proclaim yourself that and not get any criticism. You gotta let that body of work speak for itself. Now, I heard somebody, cause I read that too, and I'm glad you brought that up, say Hove, and he said, with all due respect, did Hove do movies? 
So he's talking about the complete Ooh. body of work. You can't <laughs> argue with T.I. when it comes to certain things, but let the people say that. And I don't think the people are saying that right now. I think you're saying that. So what do you think, though? Like, still, though, do, would you say that? Would you put him in that, you know, category as being number one, you know, uh, in that? Or do you, would you say that there's other people like Jay-Z? Would you uh, agree that Jay-Z, you know, um, has done more? Even though you take movies out, but everything else, I mean, Jay-Z's killing it. Yeah, oh yeah. Jay-Z's definitely killing it. Right. And I think that T.I.'s putting movies specifically in there so that he can talk about, I mean, when you look at Tupac <laughs> for what he did yeah, on, yeah, on, a, yeah. on a conscious level, what he did in music and then what he did in movies and just the full body of work, I think that you can kind of see a blueprint to where T.I. is maybe trying to emulate that, his 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 work out here in, in the streets when it comes to posting shit on Instagram.